tell us about Intellect Horizon. How did it came the project, and uh, as well um, how it works, and as well some of the personalities that uh, are going to be present. It's quite ironic, actually. Uh, it's sort of much like what we're having here. Some words were exchanged, uh, but I had a wonderful chat with uh, the founder of Dragon Scale AI. His name is Rohit Rai. He was acquired originally from Apple, and then he escaped their clutches. Uh, I should probably say a more positive version of that, but uh, then spun out and had uh, money that was stolen from his crypto wallet. And the police told him, well, too bad, we can't do anything. I then, having taken a course in quantum computing from my friend uh, Seppi, who teaches uh, quantum and AI and data science from the University of Oxford, uh, got to listen to her. She has a company called Pixelar. And uh, because I'm a nerd, like a bad punchline, as I said from the beginning, she came up with something called uh, PixoChat, which is the Star Trek translator. Translates in real time a whole bunch of different languages. And I was like, wow, these are big brains. They know things. And we said, let's do a workshop. And uh, then we're like, if we get 500 people, that would kind of be cool. Uh, then having this conversation about the challenges of AI, the social implications, the political, the uh, upheaval that's coming, uh, all the way down to pedagogy, which gets the academics all excited. Uh, or the way that we know things, the way that we teach things, and the way that we learn things. Uh, we even managed to get uh, one of my mentors from MIT, uh, Dr. Sanjay Sarma, who is the also among running six different labs, being one of the founders of uh, EDX or edX and MIT OpenCourseWare, uh, is now the CEO and El Presidente of the Asia School of Business and is working on some really cool things. But we got together. and. I think I had something that really, truly terrified me. I had the academics agree that we needed to have a conference and a conversation. And anybody that knows academics, and I say this with all the love in my heart, knows that uh, you put two of them in a, in a room and they can't uh, agree that they're in a room and they can't agree that there's two of them at the same place. And we kept growing the initiative and we said, how is it that we can take a lot of the challenges that startups are facing? Uh, so we created something called Starshot Startups, and we have over $270 billion in private equity and venture capital funds that are going to secret shop and listen to pitches of people changing uh, the world. We have folks that are going to announce initiatives like uh, the Earthshot Prize, which is a Prince William Foundation. Uh, and there are new partnerships with some of these universities in Southeast Asia. Um, there's been a lot of video game closures, studio closures. And my time living in the Valley, I said, great, let's get some recruiters. Uh, so I asked some friends, and now we created Starship Seekers. Um, and now we have every major technology company and video game studio represented um, that are going to be there to help people find their next crew. We say to take them to the stars. I think the final part that we, we thought was interesting is um, MIT has this concept called mens et manus, or hand in mind, uh, action learning. Uh, this is where we came up with Cyber Clash. Different universities across the world on the conference are going to open up their campuses and are going to teach and a hackathon, both digital and physical participants, how to uh, learn AI, how to work with AI to code, how to use it in robotics and IoT. And um, because we're a little bit unhinged and I had some raised eyebrows there, we then said, let's make it all for free. That'll show them. And let's do it without sponsors. So it's a no strings attached conference. And we get to highlight the issues of XR, which is what we see, what we hear, AI, which is what we know, and Web3, which is how can we trust any of it? Presently, I, I'm very delighted to say that, you know, free sells well. I don't know if anybody told you this, uh, but we've already 
achieved 14,000 registrations. Um, so I think we hit above our 500 number. We have incredible speakers like uh, Matthew Wheat, who's the director of the University of Oxford Department of Continuing Education. Uh, we have Aaron De Ferraria, that is the uh, one of the leaders at the University of Waterloo. Um, he's working with executive education, continuing education. Regent University, uh, we have their senior vice presidents and their, their philosophy, philosophizing big brains and cybersecurity experts that are uh, tag teaming as well to speak, to highlight, uh, and, and to try to bring maybe not answers, but to provide perspectives so that people can start to ask the right questions. And that's that's where we are now. And based off of the rate of speed, who knows where we'll end up by the time that this thing is done. We already have governments talking about a year two, and I'm just trying to get through year one. Congratulations, first of all. It's a, it's a great panel and definitely does a lot of great people. So um, you have very important panels here um, and a lot of very high profile I would say humanity moonshots and as well challenges because at the end of the day, this is all right now. I think everyone is lost with when it comes to AI. And uh, I think the most, I think the biggest challenge right now is definitely how we can actually map some kind of journey that doesn't uh, disrupt more <laughs> than we are already disrupted. Because of course, the irony is that these very small people making the decisions, but uh, the huge part of humanity, although we have better capacities than ever, probably in, in humanity development, we are as well in a lot of different velocities. So let's start by um, one of one of the things that uh, that is one of your major um, panels in the beginning. Um, I would like to start uh, uh, and this. I would like one question on this topic, and I know that there's different speakers on this, but I would like to, to talk about this. And this is actually a, a topic that Dr. Seppi Shaka um, uh, is going to be mentioned. So, the future of enabling technologies using applies AI and quantum computing. So definitely, these are probably the most uh, disrupt disruptive um, technology in history. And as well, probably the most complicated for people listening to us, because everyone has an opinion about AI, but anyone that is actually using AI to change the world economy, besides disruption, that's the bigger question. And definitely, of course, there's great things coming out of AI, but I would like to see how do you see this topic? Of course, without going too much, the idea is for people to go to the conference, but just your opinion on this topic in general. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the inspirational things is there's individuals that know what they're talking about, like yourself. Uh, and then you have a lot of talking heads that are overnight uh, flyby AI experts, and they have a platform and they'll use impressive words like foundational models and uh, generative AI and LLM, and but they won't actually know what any of it means, but it sounds really cool. Um, and then they'll say that it's gonna take our jobs. And actually, it's something that we we probably should feel slightly insecure about because you have multi-model AI models now that uh, are effectively able to synthetically generate beautiful content. Uh, words that I think I would not be able to say so eloquently. And it's now getting proliferated into voice, into video with solutions like Runway ML. And the question is, well, what happens when all of the intellectually heavy parts of humanity are suddenly removed? What happens to the social elements when suddenly it's just AIs talking to AIs? It starts to kind of sound like a, something out of Black Mirror. I think we just gave a free plug to Netflix. Uh, but these are really large existential crises. And we found out about the sociocultural um, impact of social media and how it actually changed an entire generation. And now we're providing these models that have a ton of data and a wonderful uh, capacity to do great good and creativity or, or great tears. And we're making them open source uh, we're making them free to the world. 
And we're also not really certain on how to prepare people, both young and old, for this. And I think on that side, it can be quite scary. On the flip side of the coin, because we want to be optimistic about this, man, is there a lot of work that we no longer have to do because it can be freed up through automation. Um, we have the capacity with AI that only has the ability to synthetically generate that of which uh, humanity has created so far, but not what is undiscovered that we could create tomorrow um, until we reach singularity, perhaps. And I think one of the components is trust. Web3 blockchain, in theory, was built on the idea that there's a ledger, that there's visibility, and that you have uh, you know, custody of control throughout the ownership of the life of something. Because this is a, a major problem. There's these black box AI models, and we're not really sure who made them, what biases created them. And uh, if you ask ChatGPT, ChatGPT says, no problem, you can trust me. So I'm sure it's probably fine. Um, but it's a battle of, of these tech titans. Right now, the other challenge that we have is we're, we're blindly giving access and implementing these things into our society, into our software. And we're not really questioning what are the potential ethical considerations. We saw this with the self-driving cars of, do you kill the passenger on the inside uh, to save people on the outside? or vice versa. So there's actually a lot, as you were saying, uh, of, of human touches that we have yet to decide. Um, there's not enough qualified people uh, in actuality, maybe aspir aspirationally there is. And this is, I think, the, the great opportunity for us to have a dialogue and to not just come as uh, people from one country or college, or identity, um, but more so as a public discussion on humanity. And to really, at a point in time that is going to, in my personal opinion, be greater than the Industrial Revolution or the age of the internet, uh, unlock human potential. And if we have that capacity of creativity, ingenuity, and um, vision, Let's try to make sure that it's a utopia, maybe not a dystopia, and that we're going in eyes wide open, uh, as opposed to uh, you know going on a roller coaster ride that we're not allowed to get off, and we're terrified at what happens at the end. So we'll see what happens, and and we have very big brains that are going to talk all about that, uh, which is very exciting. <laughs>